accounting principles first one is accounting entity or business entity principle according to the business entity principle business is considered to be separate and distinct distinct from its owners business transactions therefore are recorded in the books of accounts from the business point of view and not owners owners being considered separate and distinct from business they are considered creditors of the business to the extent of their capital their account with the business is credited with the capital introduced and the profit earned during the year etc and debited by the drawings made for example when the proprietor introduced capital his capital account is credited the amount in the credit of the capital is a liability of the enterprise towards the proprietor or owner this principle applies to every form of enterprise including proprietorship firms the accounting entity principle is a useful principle as it has developed responsibility accounting it has made possible ascertaining the result of each department or division of the enterprise money measurement principle according to the money measurement principle transactions and events that can be measured in money terms are recorded in the books of accounts of the enterprise in other words money is the common denominator in recording and reporting all transactions consider that an enterprise has rupees 20000 cash two quintals of raw material seven delivery vans and five acres of land these assets cannot be added and shown in the financial statements unless their monetary value is ascertained however the principles suffer from the following two major limitations first one is transactions and events that cannot be measured in money terms are not recorded however important they may be to the enterprise for example human resources resources with the enterprise are important to the enterprise but are not reflected in the financial statements because they cannot be measured and expressed in money terms b part is the yardstick of measurement is for example money is considered as having static value as the transactions are recorded at the value on the transaction date however the value of money fluctuates with price level changes accounting period principle according to the accounting period principle the life of an enterprise is broken into smaller periods so that its performance is measured at regular intervals the accounts of an enterprise are maintained following the going concern concept meaning the enterprise shall continue its activities in the professional foreseeable future once one may argue that the financial statement of the enterprise should be prepared at the end of its life it is possible to do so but a number of users of financial in statements and many of them especially the management and bankers require the information from the accounts at regular intervals so that decision can be taken at the appropriate time management requires information at regular interval to assess the performance funds funds requirements short term as well as long term bankers require accounting information periodically because they have been in they have invested money and have to ensure their its safety and returns similarly the government has to assess the tax dues from an enterprise 
in view of the above the life of the enterprise is broken into smaller periods usually one year which are termed as the accounting period full disclosure principle according to the principle of full disclosure there should be complete and understandable reporting on the financial statements of an significant information relating to the economic affairs of the entity apart from the legal requirements good accounting practice requires all material and significant information be disclosed whether information should be disclosed or not always depends depends on the materiality of the information the companies act 1956 provides for disclosure termed as legally required disclosures yet there may be many material information which is disclosed will make the financial statements more meaningful disclosure of material information will result in better understanding materiality pin principle the materiality principle refers to the relative importance of an item or an event according to the american accounting association an item should be regarded as material if there is a reason to believe that knowledge of it would influence the decision of an informed investor thus whether an item is material or not shall depend on its nature and or amount it thus means that it is a matter of exercising judgment to decide which item is material and which is not and only those items should be disclosed that have significant effect or are relevant to the user an item material for one enterprise may not be material for another enterprise prudence or conservatism principle the prudence or conservatism principle is many a terms described using the phrase do not anticipate a profit but provide for all possible losses in other words it it takes into consideration all prospective losses but not the prospective profits the application of this concept ensures that the financial statements present a realistic picture of the state of affairs of the enterprise and do not paint a better picture than than what actually is conservatism does not record, record anticipated revenues but provides all anticipated expenses and losses thus it may overstate liabilities it has a back draw drawback as it may be used to create secret reserve example given by creating excess provisions for doubtful debts depreciation etc and thus financial statements may not depict a true and fair view of state of affairs of the business the concept of a conservatism needs to be applied with more caution and care so that the results reported are not distorted seventh one is a cost concept or historical cost principle according to the cost concept an asset is recorded in the books of accounts at the price paid to the to acquire it and the cost is the basis for all subsequent accounting of assets asset is recorded at cost at the time of its purchase but is systematically reduced in value by charging depreciation the market value of an asset may change with the passage of time but for accounting purposes it continues to be shown in the books of accounts at its book value
is for example cost at which it was purchased minus depreciation provided up to date then matching concept or matching principle according to the matching concept cost incurred to earn revenue is recognized as earned since the accounts are usually prepared on accrual basis the expenses incurred in an accounting period are, are matched with the revenues recognized in that period the matching concept works as follows first part when an item of uh, item of revenue is recognized as income is for example is entered in the profit and loss account all expenses incurred whether paid or not are also recognized as expenses is for example are set out on the expenses side the second part is if an expense is incurred against which the revenue will be earned in the next period the amount is carried to the next period as shown in the balance sheet as an asset and then next year is treated as an expense third part if an amount of revenue is received during the year but against it services is to be rendered or goods are to be sold in the next year then the amount received is treated as revenue in the next year after the services have been rendered or the goods have been sold this year it is shown as a liability dual aspect or duality principle according to the dual aspect concept every transaction entered into by an enterprise has two aspects a debit and a credit of equal amount simply stated for every debit there is a credit of a equal amount in one or more accounts in it is also true vice versa accounting equation states assets is equal to capital plus liabilities thus fundamental equation will always remain good in other words accounting equation demonstrates the fact that for every debit there is an equivalent credit as a matter of fact the entire system of a double entry bookkeeping is based on this concept 10th point 10th point revenue recognition concept according to the revenue recognition concept revenue is considered to have been realized when a transaction has been entered into and the obligation to receive the amount has been established it is to be noted that recognizing revenue and receipt of an account are two separate aspects verifiable objective concept the verifiable objective concept holds that accounting should be free from personal bias measurement measurements that are based on verifiable evidences are regarded as objective it means all accounting transactions should be evidenced and supported by business documents these supporting documents are cash memo invoices sales bills etc and they provide the basic basis for accounting and audit